you beautiful human, I am Xanthi and in today's video we're going to be talking about internalized homophobia. <music> to start off the video, um, I just want to talk about why I'm making this video and what kind of led me to where I am now. So throughout my interviews, my gay videos, and just being a gay person in general, <laughs> I've heard a lot about internalized homophobia and I've also um, had some of it myself. So I wanted to make a video based on it because it is a such like an important topic and we should be talking about it more and so I kind of want to normalize it and help you, kind of give you signs and kind of backstory about my experience with it a little bit too. So I hope this helps and uh, let's get into the video. So first of all I just want to um, define what internalized homophobia is. Actually on here I have my handy dandy notes and um, I looked up the actual definition of internalized homophobia and I found this one on this website that I will put up here at the link. Um, and it says, the gay person's direction of negative social attitudes toward the self. So I really like that definition because it is so well written. Um, basically what it means is that um, society is telling the person who is part of the community that them being part of it is wrong and that it is not the norm to be gay and it's not the norm to feel this way basically. Oh my god I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, anyway, so Basically, what this means is that society is making you think that your feelings of being gay are wrong and that you shouldn't be gay, which a lot of people in the community have faced. First of all, how is this developed? Um, I kind of put in point for form just different um, things that I kind of thought developed this and I also researched some stuff so let me just read you these real quick. So basically it is developed by the environment around you, the outside environment, even though it is internalized homophobia, like internal, it's from external environments that make it internal, if that makes sense. So for example, if your family is religious, heavily religious, and being gay is a huge sin, you're going to go to hell, um, all these different things. You are raised and put in that environment that it is not okay to be gay. Um, you are going to suffer and it's just a bad thing, basically. This can also just happen in general, even if your family wasn't religious like mine. Um, just like, well, media, um, social media, um, television, radio... Um, school, it's just, um, it's not talked about a lot, which doesn't really help um, the idea of normalizing being in the community. Um, and so, it's just thought that it's not normal, and it shouldn't be normal, and you shouldn't be gay, you know? And um, there are also, I'm talking about homophobia today, which is kind of like the umbrella term for everything else. It's transphobia, biphobia, lesbian phobia, gay phobia etc. A bunch of different phobias, which um, phobia just means that you're afraid of something like spider, what is that called? Arachnophobia. Um, just different phobias, um, which is kind of funny because I think about that and it just means that people are scared of gay people or trans or lesbian or bi or etc. And it, it's kind of funny to me because like why are you scared of us? Like, what have we done? You know, um, we're more scared of straight people than they are scared of us. You know, it's kind of like that thing. It's kind of strange. Um, but basically you're just kind of scared of the idea of being gay. Um, or other people are scared of you being gay. Um, and it is a scary thing to think about you being gay or you being different, especially when you're starting to think about it, because there are places in this world that you will get hurt or killed for being gay, which is 
completely ridiculous. Um, and um, so you obviously have to think about safety factors as well. So it's just a whole thing. Back onto how it is developed. So um, out like outside environment, um, your brain, like your brain is being taught to not think that's the norm and to think that it's wrong. Um, fear, because you, like I said before, you can get seriously injured or killed for being part of the community. Um, being kicked out or like hearing people getting kicked out or um, seeing bad things happen to people who are in the community. Your parents, religion, um, your school, social media, television, radio, everything. Um, YouTube even, um, which is why I'm trying to bring awareness and normalize everything on my channel to hopefully help you um, to feel more comfortable with themselves and hopefully learn that being yourself is okay and you have so much support. I support you, um, the other viewers here support you, um, and you are loved and supported and you are not alone. And I'm going to have to take a break because it is lunch time, but I will be back and we are going to talk about how to know if you have internalized homophobia or if you're just straight. Alright, back from my lunch break. So. Let's continue this video. So how to know if you have internalized homophobia. So I actually looked this up on Google and I found this website. I'll put the link to the website here. And um, basically it kind of showed a list of like different signs that you could have internalized homophobia and what kind of happens when you do. Um, I already knew some of these, it, um, but it was just nice to have like a nice list. I obviously didn't go word by word, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna share this list with you now. So, one of the first things that you kind of notice is that you are okay with other people being gay. You're fine with it. You see people on um, like TV or shows, um, not very often, but um, you see that and you're okay with it. You think it's great, but you could never be gay. It couldn't be possible that you could be gay, right? So that's like the first thing that happens. You kind of notice more gay people and you find it okay. You're like, great job for you. You're awesome, but I could never be gay. All right, so that's like the first thing. The second one is that you're almost obsessed with this topic. You're always thinking about it. You're talking about it. You're researching it. Um, and you feel just like you need to know more about it and you're obsessed with it. So maybe you're watching more gay shows. Maybe you're looking up um, Am I Gay quizzes or maybe you're looking up Is Gay a Sin um, and all these different things. Um, and just being more obsessed with it, being more engaged with the topic might be a sign that you have internalized homophobia if you're looking up things like Is it a sin? Like How does it work? Whatever. Another thing uh, is that you would try to change your sexuality. I tried this. Um, I mostly did this because um, my mom's gay and she came out to me when I was about 9 or 10 and um, that's the time when I was like, oh my gosh, it's a real thing, that's amazing. Um, and I started keeping to think about, keeping, keep, bleh, okay. And I started to keep thinking about it, and I was a little obsessed with the topic, but I never saw myself as being gay, because I was like, oh, well, I'm just supposed to marry a man, have children, and that's my life, you know? Because that's just how we're taught when we're growing up. Um, but then I started to kind of develop some gay crushes, um, or girl crushes, and I was like, no, this can't be, like, happening, this is wrong, because now everyone's gonna think I'm just copying my mom. And, um, so I didn't want to copy her because I was like, that's not cool. Um, so I was like, no, I can't, I can't. And a good example of this is in high school, there was this guy and I was in grade nine at the time. So I was about 14 and, 
And um, I was in two classes where it was just me as the female. They were all other boys because I was in applied classes, which um, I guess not as many girls did applied classes. And so in one of my classes, I had like 22 boys and me. <laughs> and in another one, there were only about eight boys and me because we were in a smaller class. And um, this boy was in both of those classes. Um, and we started talking because I had never met him before. All the other boys I knew from my school or just seeing them around. Um, but I had never met this boy before and I was like, oh hey, what's up? And we started talking and um, becoming friends and everything. And then, um, yeah, we just always hung out <clears throat> in class. And so I was like, this is great. This means that maybe I'm straight because I feel feelings towards him. Um, <laughs> ah, so eventually, um, this kind of developed into, I guess, wheeling, which people called, which is basically, you know you like each other, but you're not dating, because I don't, I don't actually know. <laughs> um, and so one day he texted me, he's like, hey, Xanthi, my guy friends are asking me if you like me. And, and he's like, what should I say? I'm like, say yes. And, um, he was like, oh. And I was like, oh. And so he knew that I liked him for, like, a week. And then he finally told me that he liked me. And I was like, bruh, this is rude. <laughs> and so, um, we said, oh, okay, we, like, like each other, right? At the same time, I had a crush on a girl, but... And so I tried really hard. I kept texting him, asking him, like, hey, want to hang out at lunch? Hey, want to do this? Hey, want to do that? And he just, like, didn't. <laughs> he, like, went to his house at lunch, and he just, like, avoided me, didn't text me, um, kind of blew me off all the time, and I was like, this is rude. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I don't really care because I like this other girl, and this is just my attempt at being straight. <laughs> Anyways, so that semester went on like that. We had one lunch, I think, together or two or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so then at the end of that semester, it was it turned into summer, and he's like, hey, want to be friends? I was like, yeah, and uh, that was fine. Anyway, so um, he's a great guy, just not good uh, for being a boyfriend. All right, for me. And so basically, um, I was trying my hardest to kind of be attracted to him or like like him or have a crush on him and try my hardest to show interest in him. Um, I've always been like the person to like tell people I have a crush on them, kind of first like, hey, you know, like trying to start things. I, I don't like to like just sit around waiting for people to tell me things. I'm like, get done. So yeah, and this was also my first time having someone someone I liked like me back. Um, so I was like even more excited, especially since it was a boy. Um, but yeah, it didn't turn out very well and uh, we can see here that um, we're gay. <laughs> so yeah, that was me trying to change my sexuality. So another sign is that you go through feelings of denial with oneself so with yourself so you're feeling denial basically which is a whole complicated feeling um I, there's like a cycle i'll try to like find the actual cycle and put it here it's actually called the grief cycle but um it's fine <laughs> basically you're just trying to change yourself and you're in denial of what's actually happening so you're pushing your feelings down you're oppressing them suppressing oppressing suppress you know i'm just gonna not use that word you're pushing them down really deep not letting anyone find it not letting yourself find it you're denying that you are gay and um so you're just pushing all of those feelings down and that can have a huge effect on your mental health and your physical health because if you are having issues with your mental health, it also resonates with your body. A good example of this is um, one time in my life, um, still kind of sometimes, but um, 
I was very stressed, um, very sad <laughs> with life basically and um, just like different things happening in my life. Um, I was feeling like sad and anxious and just not good and then that had an effect on my stomach. Um, so I was feeling like nauseous every day, sometimes I still do. Um, not eating that much, um, losing a lot of weight, and um, people thought that I had an ulcer in my stomach, so I went to the hospital, got some testings done, and they were just like, no, you're just not eating. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even notice that I wasn't eating, you know, because your mind is just so, like, in a strange spot or a strange place that you're just not even conscious of you not eating. Um, it wasn't that like I purposely didn't eat, it was honestly I was just like I don't feel like it, you know? Um, or I, I'm not hungry even though my stomach was like screaming at me for food. <laughs> Anywho, we're better now. <laughs> Gained some weight, let's go. <laughs> um, Self-harm, which is kind of what I just talked about. Even though I wasn't purposefully doing it, I was causing myself harm by not eating um and so self-harm is there are so many different variations of it um and it's just anything that's kind of bringing your body pain or suffering and you're not helping it or you're inducing that pain um, and this can come from unconscious or not meaning to like I did um, or conscious um, efforts where you just feel so uncomfortable with yourself and so stressed out and angry at yourself because you're not supposed to be gay that you're actually causing yourself harm. Um, you might not know that that's why you're causing yourself harm. Um, hopefully this video will help you if you are and hopefully you'll realize that you are just kind of harming yourself for being yourself which you don't need to do your body is beautiful you are beautiful and you deserve nothing but love um, but unfortunately a lot a, a huge amount of people in the community go through self-harm um, because of society basically because of the fear of being gay because of the denial of being gay because being gay is not right um so that is also another sign obviously self-harm comes in many shapes shape and sizes um many forms and it can come from anything really but for the sake of this video we're talking about internalized homophobia and that is one of the signs you use projection against other minorities as a self-defense mechanism. If you don't know what projection is, it just means that you're projecting your own pain and sadness onto another group or your own anger. So let's say another minority is, if you're having internalized homophobia, let's say another minority let's make it into stuffed animals so let's say being a unicorn is a minority and I am feeling internalized homophobia and I'm angry at myself I'm sad and depressed and scared so I would be like really mean to unicorns I'd be like they are so like gross and their horn is so mean and I don't know like um unicorns shouldn't be able to like, have a life, they don't deserve it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just being really mean to unicorns, right? And, um, sorry. I love Gay. I love him. Don't you worry, he's great. <laughs> um, anywho. But yeah, using projection as a self-defense mechanism, which is one of the many defense mechanisms that humans use when in distress. So if you find yourself, um, even bullying, if you find yourself being the person you don't want to be or the person who hurts you, um, you might be experiencing internalized homophobia because it does bring a lot of bad emotions to your mind. So those were the signs and symptoms, I guess, of having internalized homophobia. Um, so now we're going to change the topic and kind of 
go to a happier, lighthearted, helpful section of this video. And this section is how to help yourself. All right, so um, the first thing, if you're feeling um, uncertain about yourself, if you're feeling scared or angry, anxious, anything, um, if you know someone who you trust, talk to them. Just talk to them about your emotions, your feelings. Just get it out there so then you can have some compassion for it and hopefully they can give you some good advice. Um, if you don't think you have anyone, um, here's my Instagram um, handle. I know that not everyone has Instagram, but if you do, um, here it is. Um, I am always free to talk to. Um, um, you can talk to me at any time and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And um, also just the comments down below if you're able to comment. Um, you can absolutely do that. I know that there are so many supportive people out there. You are so loved. You are so worthy of the love. And you are supported by me and the other viewers as well. Another thing is to try to think of why you are feeling like this. Why do you think that being gay is wrong? Why are you scared of it? Why this? Why that? And just kind of write it down. And if it's, for example, because your parents are religious or because you're scared of your community, you're scared of being hurt, um, you think it's gross or just random things, just get it out there so then you can really think about why. And hopefully you can fix those or help those um, reasons and try to just think through everything and think, why is that so important? that I can't be myself, you know? And so just try to think about why you're feeling like this, write it down, and just reflect on it. Like I just said, um, another thing is just to write down all your feelings. Just write down anything that you're feeling, anything that you're scared about, like I said earlier, um, or anything that you're interested in, and anything that you learn. Just um, journaling is amazing. It's really therapeutic and um, I love journaling. journaling. I have so many journals. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and it's just such a wonderful thing to do. You get to just dump all of your feelings and emotions onto paper and you get it out. It feels so good, I promise you. And the last thing is just to know that you're not alone. The majority, I would say, of people in the community have felt this way before and still feel it. Um, I mean, I still feel scared to do certain things in public, like hold my girlfriend's hand. Not that right now with COVID we can do that, but when we were able to and when we are able to, um, I still feel scared or even just, well... Yeah, mostly just like holding her hand or even kissing her in public, which I don't do <laughs> um, that much, which I really want to because who cares? I mean, people do it all the time and you are allowed to. So it's just, anyway, um, there are so many internal battles that go with being part of the community um, that I just want to try to help you and hopefully you've gotten something from this video. Um, just know, again, you're not alone. You are supported by me and by the other people in the community and the other viewers here. Um, and again, if you have any questions or you want to talk to someone, comment in the section below or just um, give me a DM on my Instagram. Alright, I love you so, so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope that this video helped. If it did, please leave a like. Um, it really helps me know what kind of videos you want. If you have any video suggestions, you can absolutely comment that down below. And um, don't forget to subscribe for more videos every week. Um, next week, I'm going to be reacting to my old videos on my mom's channel. Um, I don't think you have seen most of them. Um, they're just of me as a small child. And I thought it would be fun to kind of react to those and um, see how much I've changed. If any. Um, so, yes, I love you. <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, and um, in the meantime, here is a video that you can go check out. And I'll see you in there. <laughs> Bye.